everyone, and welcome back to the show. We are here today on our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday episode, episode 1867. If you want to check out all the different show notes from today's show with all the links and resources, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1867. stephencabral.com forward slash 1867. So what I'd like to talk about with you today is this concept of why you regain weight after doing a specific diet or detox or fast or some type of protocol that allows you to maybe lose weight up front but not able to keep all of that or maybe any of it in the long run. So this is an important topic. I want you to know that um, I take all of your questions very, very serious. And so I am now opening up what's called office hours. So once or twice a month, I get on Instagram Live. I get on Facebook Live and I answer your questions. I also answer your questions on the weekends for the Ask Cabral uh, house calls. And of course, when it is a larger question like this one that comes in a couple times, I want to be able to dedicate a whole show to it. So for today's show, we're going to dedicate the absolute best way to lose weight and why you regain weight after some of these different types of protocols. So as we get started, we have to understand that there's two ways to lose weight. One, we do something short term and we're able to lose that weight through some type of restrictive based method typically, uh, but we're not able to keep it right? So that's a short-term weight loss. Someone that wants to lose 10 pounds in a week, you can do it. It's not great probably to do if you're not able to keep those long-term results. And then the long-term method would be looking at, okay, I want to lose a half a percent to 1% of my body weight every single week until I meet my goal weight. And that's what a lot of people do. You know, if you weigh 200 pounds and you want to lose 1% of your body weight a week, uh, then that's two pounds per week. And if you want to get to 150 pounds, well, then you simply do the math. Well, what would that be? Well, it'd be 25 weeks, right? So 25 weeks, about six months of the year, six months to lose that um, 50 pounds. And you know, you could absolutely do that. Like that, that's without a doubt. There are a lot of people that don't want to wait six months to lose that 50 pounds. Well, could you lose 50 pounds in three months? Well, you could, there's going to be some more upfront things that you would need to do. And if you're okay with waiting the six months, well, then you might want to just do it over a slower period of time and and do a little bit less, but still get those same results. So the first thing I'm asking you is you need to decide what you're looking to lose the weight for. And if you hope it to be long-term or or temporary, that's a big part of it. So let's say that you're not one of the people who just wants it to be temporary because, you know, a temporary weight loss is actually easy and it's not unhealthy to do uh, if you just want to lose about five pounds. Okay. So five pounds of weight loss is not difficult to do. And again, only you would only look at this from the short term. And I just, because I help so many people that just say like, oh, I just want to, you know, look great for this or this or feel great or whatever it might be. And it's up to them, of course. Well, we can help them do that in literally about 24 to 48 hours. And it's nothing too crazy at all. We do something called the one day reset set diet. And that's very, very powerful for one or two days. And that's all that we use it for. And it's only for people like before a big event. And it's very, very simple. And then they just go back to their normal style of eating. It doesn't hurt their metabolism or anything like that. And they're good to go. But what I want to look at is that there's a lot of different diet plans out there right now. There's a lot of people professing uh, just, you know, one diet is better than all other diets. And they're the expert that you need to look to. And I'm more of an integrative uh, based practitioner. I like to look at things from a truly holistic standpoint standpoint. And so I say, well, there's good in this. And then there's not so much good in this, right? So what I want to look at it is this, let's say that someone is doing a fast, okay, a fast is a good thing for your body. I've talked about that, I'm going to link it up. I've talked about one day fasts. I've talked about the overnight fast, one day fast, uh, what to do when a longer two to three day fast is necessary. And then uh, what about a longer one once a year? Well, I, again, I'm going to link that up today. It's a full podcast. So I don't want to go through all the different types of fasting here today. But you have to understand is that fasting is not like a longer fast is not the best way to lose weight. It's really not. Uh, and I want to explain why. When you are fasting, you are doing that specifically for health-based reasons. You don't want to look at it as like, oh, I'm going to biohack my body into trying to burn more body fat. Because the problem is this, the fast is going to end. With all of these short-term things, you have to understand, the fast is going to end. Even when we do our one-day reset diet, it's meant for health. It's meant after a weekend of cheat meals or whatever it might be. It's meant to reset the body. 
So a fast should be looked at as we're going to increase autophagy. We're going to allow for digestion, or sorry, relaxation of the digestive system. We're going to enable the body to deal with already what it has going on in the inside without adding more to it. That is what a fast is all about. So if you're using fasting up and down, up and down to lose weight, not a good idea. And yes, you will rebound. You will regain some weight. So let's talk about on a fast why you might regain some weight. Well, it's honestly for almost the same reason as you would on a low, low, low carb diet, like sub 50, sub 25 grams of carbs per day. Because when you're not taking in more carbohydrates, your body is holding less water. I want to repeat that. One of the reasons why, I wouldn't even say that you lose weight. Yes, you do lose weight, but you just retain less water, less fluid. And that's not necessarily a good thing either. Part of it's good and part of it's not. There are two parts to this. Your muscle tissue, your muscle is about 72% water. So if you are not getting enough carbohydrates, the body can sometimes look a little bit flatter. No, say you're not working out, pumping up those muscles, right? Your body might look actually a little bit more depleted, a little bit more flat because it is those carbohydrates with the glycogen. So let's say you do your workout, your muscle actually takes some of those carbohydrates in the form of glycogen, stores them there along with fluid, which increases your muscle tissue size. That's not a bad thing. That is what your muscles, they look toned, and I'm using that in air quotes if you're watching this on video. It gives them some suppleness to them. It's why some people use creatine. I know creatine can be beneficial for ATP, but a lot of people using it are looking to put on size with it. Glutamine can be another one, not as powerful in terms of cell volumization, meaning retaining water, but certainly great in its own right as well. So what happens then if you're on a low, low carb diet or you are fasting? Well, whether you're taking in water or not, I'm assuming you are, you're not going to hold it to the same degree. So you lose weight. You lose weight effortlessly because your body's about two thirds water, give or take 5% really depending on the individual. So when we look at that, we say, well, yeah, that's a lot of weight to give when your body's two thirds water, right? So we want to understand that when you come off of that low carb diet, when you come off of that keto based diet, you might rebound in weight pretty aggressively because you may decide to eat a carbohydrate again. I know, I know it sounds crazy, but you you might decide that you want to eat carbohydrates again. And when you do, you rebound in weight. Now, there's a couple things that may also happen. If the fast lasts too long and you're not breaking it properly, or your low, low carb diet lasts more than three to four weeks, you actually might start to not only lower your metabolism, but lower your body's ability to actually handle carbohydrates. That is so overlooked. If you don't eat carbohydrates and you do that for an extended period, Period of time, your body is typically not as adapted to be able to handle carbohydrates. So while we do agree with a lower carbohydrate diet on our fat loss and weight loss system or our functional medicine detox, I'll get to that in just a moment on detoxes, we do not recommend it for more than 21 days, 28 days maximum. In our practice, we only do 21 days. And here's why. Besides the fact of poor carbohydrate metabolism, we also can get a dip in thyroid function. And think of thyroid as your overall cellular metabolism. How many calories are you burning today? How well is your brain working today? Like all of those different things, iron utilization, oxygenation of your tissues, your red blood cells, all of that matters. So what we do is we say, okay, based on literally scientific research and validation by in-practice lab testing, we know that many women, especially women, not always men, but especially women, after a low-carb diet that's lasted for more than four weeks, keto diet, all of them, carnivore diet, et cetera, they start to plateau around week six. And when they do, they don't lose a lot more weight. And actually, they start to go in reverse. They start to burn more muscle tissue, so more catabolic nature. I'll talk about that in just a second. And their metabolism then starts to dip.
So if they're on a low carb diet or not, they actually have to drop their calories, even though they've already dropped their carbs. And I had a, I had a nice little conversation with, uh, you would definitely know his name if I, if I said his name, I'm not going to, uh, but we were talking, uh, this is on camera and they were saying, well, a lot of their clients now have gone from being able to eat 2,400 calories a day and they're on a keto diet. Now they only need to eat 1200 calories a day. And I said to them point blank and I said, listen, like you're, I mean, you know what you're talking about. You're super uh, knowledgeable on all of this, but has it ever crossed your mind that that's not a good thing? Meaning that you've effectively cut the people that you're teaching their metabolism in half because now their body's getting by on 1200 calories per day. And please don't look at that as a good thing. That means that your body has stopped burning those extra 1200 calories because if you stayed at the same weight at 2400 and now you're maintaining the current weight at 1200 and you, there's maybe like a 10 pound difference let's just say that's all that it is you've effectively effectively shut down your metabolism that is not ideal because i think most people would prefer to eat a little bit more food but not only that we way overlook this fact a fact i'm going to be talking about this on a future podcast it's easy to meet your micro, your macros. You can manipulate your carbs, your protein, your fat all day long. You could, you could cut your calories if you want to 1,200. The problem is it's really difficult. Without supplementation, without nutritional supplements, it's nearly impossible to get all of your micronutrients and all of the flavanols and everything else that you need for, you know, on those 1,200 calories a day. You need to be meticulous. And just, again, most people are not looking at that because they're simply trying to fit their macros. So what happens is now the body starts to become more catabolic. The body starts to age at a much faster rate, and that's what I see, especially for a lot of women in my practice as well, and especially if you're over the age of 30, 35, your body does not have the same reserves it did uh, when you were in college and before. So now we're looking at the metabolism lowering. So now when you go back to a normal diet, you can no longer eat the same amount of calories. Under, just, I would just Again, I just want you to understand that I'm going to link up more shows on intermittent fasting, no doubt about it. I'll link up shows on on all these different topics, okay? Couple I do want you to check out though is how not to retox after a detox. That is a podcast I did a while back. I will link all of these up today at episode 1867. Okay, this is a major point because we do a functional medicine detox that again, I did not invent, okay? I think that I was able to take it to another level. I was able to simplify it. I was able to get the cost down. I was able to do all of those things. So I'm very happy about that. However, I did not invent how our liver works. Our liver works through a very specific phase one and phase two detox uh, properties. And that allows us to take all of these fat soluble, harmful chemicals that we're exposed to from the environment, from bug sprays and pesticides and heavy metals. And again, if you lab test, no doubt about it, you're finding some of these. Nobody escapes it, okay? Not with 100,000 now man-made chemicals in the environment. But the nice thing is, our our liver is able to detox these things if it gets enough of the right nutrients. Well, a functional medicine detox allows you to supercharge your liver. That's really what it does. It gives you the right vitamins, the right minerals like the zinc and the selenium and the vitamin C and the glutamine and to be able to produce more of the then um, sulfur-based amino acids as well, like giving your body the N-acetylcysteine, the uh, silymarin, the uh, glutathione, the you know uh, taurine, all of these great things that our liver needs. And we don't typically get those as much because we're not eating as many of the cruciferous vegetables and, and other items as well that uh, may not even agree with us as well. So what a functional medicine detox does, and I know many people listening to the show know all about it. They might even do them quarterly, which is great. Definitely a gold star for that. But the issue is this. Let's say that you do uh, the seven day detox that we do. Okay. Many people will lose five to seven uh, pounds in that one week. No doubt about it. So they're thrilled. They're ecstatic. They wanted to lose the weight anyway, but the goal was never the weight loss. I want to explain this and I want to then reiterate how much weight you're going to keep from that. Okay. So the goal of a functional medicine detox is not weight loss. If you need to lose weight, you will lose weight. If you don't need to lose weight, you probably aren't going to lose too much. My body is now at the weight that I like it to be at. I lose about three pounds or so over the week. Not a, not a massive amount. And I can choose to regain that if I choose to after the week's over. But someone that needs to lose the weight, they could lose five to 10 pounds in that seven days. But here's why. I want to explain to why. 
because we're using the best of intermittent fasting. We're allowing the digestive system to relax period of, uh, for a period of time. We're rebalancing healthy levels of inflammation, healthy levels of hormones, healthy levels of blood sugar. We are doing, we're removing the typical food sensitivities. People don't know this is happening. It happens behind the scenes, right? So, that's why people are able to lose that amount of weight that quickly. Their body reaches homeostasis at a much faster rate. And if you do the 21-day functional medicine detox, it's going to be absolutely life-changing. But here's the thing. You will keep the majority of that weight loss if you needed to lose the weight. So here's the thing. You'll probably gain back. I can't give everyone an exact uh, estimate. But let's say that you lose seven pounds in that first week. You might gain back two. So your net is five. That's pretty phenomenal. You did five without extra exercise, without extra you know, steps, without any extra anything. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. You can go on. We've had people lose 21 pounds in 21 days. And that's because their body was so inflamed, hormonally imbalanced, eating lots of food sensitivities. And they were able to keep the majority of that as well. And if not, even more, because in 21 days, you get a much better replica for what you're actually going to be able to maintain because it's not over just one week. You've been doing it now for three weeks. But here's the thing. What I'm trying to share with you is this, is that whatever plan you're on, and if it's, if it's more of a short term, like even a functional medicine detox, 21 days, that's it. We don't want to go longer than that. It's 21 days for a reason. Let's say you're on a low-carb diet or an elimination diet or any one of these diets, and it's 21 days. Good, okay? But there's two parts to this. One, you can't just go back to your other style of eating, whatever it was. And here's why. Even if it was healthy, I have many people say like, well, we already ate healthy before and we went back to it. Here's the issue. You don't know that all of the things that you were doing before weren't food sensitivities, at least some of them. You don't know that they weren't digesting well with you unless you run an IgG food sensitivity test, unless you run that candida metabolic vitamins test, unless you run the bacteria and parasite stool test. You don't know that the diet that you were on before that you weren't getting results on, even though it was so-called healthy, doesn't mean that it's agreeing with you. So yes, I recommend running the labs. I'll link those up uh, for you today to do right at home as well. But the bigger portion is this, is that you need to then not just go back to unhealthy or un unhealthy diet or healthy diet, but you need to transition off what you know is working. This is so crucial. This is the key because you'll get to keep at least 80 to 90% of your results. So here's what you need to do. You need to choose something that's going to get you those results because let's face it, you and I both want results. The sooner, the better. If you need to lose 50 pounds, would you like to lose 15 plus of those in 21 days? Probably. Rather than waiting two times, it would take you two months. Would you rather lose it in three weeks or two months? Because that's the difference. Most people would say three weeks. And I would say, good, as long as that does not hurt you in the long term to being able to achieve your 50-pound weight loss goal. Okay, so that's really important. So what you need to do is you need to find something that works. Okay, so whether it's the functional medicine detox, whether it's a fat loss and weight loss system, whatever you prefer, honestly, you choose. But here's what I want you to think about. If it is getting you results, fantastic. If it is somewhat restrictive, like any elimination plan is going to be, after the 21 days, 28 days maximum, because that's when we start to see metabolism start to lower, especially in women, and especially in people not strength training. This is so crucial. I, I can't add this to the show here today as well, but you need to tune into my previous show on why doing a 16-8 diet is detrimental to almost every single person doing it, and a lot of the weight loss is actually from muscle, except if you do one particular thing. So definitely tune into that show. I can't recommend that enough, but I can't go on a tangent on that right now. So here's what you need to do. Pick a plan. Okay, short term, 21 days. And if it gets results for you, you know you're onto something. The functional medicine detox, the fat loss, city weight loss system, right? One for health, also for weight loss, the other for weight loss. So what do you do? Okay, you start to add back in one new variable after the 21 days or the 28 days, whatever you decide. So that allows you to what? Well, add one more thing back in. Typically, it's a carbohydrate, right? So typically, it might be a starch, it might be fruit, it might be something that you weren't eating before. And that's your only variable of change. Now, don't look at it the first day. What happened? happens over the course of a week when you add one cup per day of whatever that new thing is, a banana, a cup of blue
blueberries, a cup of wild cherries, or a sweet potato. When you let's say you add that at either breakfast or lunch, what happens to your weight loss goal over the next three weeks, four weeks or so? Does it is it a big detriment? Because you probably won't continue losing it the same way, but that's okay because you're not gonna lose 21 pounds every 21 days. Like this is not this is reality. Plus, we want you to keep it without short circuiting your metabolism. This is the way to do it. The goal is actually to be able to eat more food. I know that sounds kind of strange, but the goal is to actually increase your metabolism. If you used to be able to eat 1600 calories a day, or let's go back. Most people I see in my practice, again, a lot of women, they can only eat 1400 calories. And if they go above 1400 calories, they start gaining weight. Okay. So let's say that you could always only eat 1400 calories. If all of a sudden you're eating now 1600 calories a day and you're still losing weight, you are winning. You're, why? Because that means that your metabolism has increased. So for all those people who can only eat half the calories on a you know, carb restrictive diet or keto diet or whatever, that's not healthy. It's not good for your metabolism in the long run. This is your body. You need to keep this metabolism for the next 30, 40, 50, 60 years of your life. You don't want to keep being that much that detrimental because when you lower your metabolism that much, there's no doubt about it, it's affected your hormones. Estrogen balance, uh, sorry, estrogen dominance, uh, low progesterone levels, imbalanced cortisol, low cortisol in the morning, high cortisol at night, which is called the dysfunctional diurnal rhythm. Uh, You start to get lower Uh, levels of thyroid, you get dysfunctional hemoglobin A1C, insulin, you name it. Again, all of these can be found on a lab test. You run the big five labs, you're going to see all of these different things. But again, I don't want to digress into that area. So here's what I want you to do. Change one variable. If you start to be able to actually increase your calories or increase your carbohydrates, every couple weeks, you might add a little bit more in there. All of a sudden now, if you're able to do that, you're adapting. You're better adapted to carbohydrates. Your body's better adapted to more calorie intake, and it is able to burn more fuel on its own. And if it's able to burn more fuel, you are absolutely going to tap into more body fat. Your body's going to be more efficient at burning body fat and using carbohydrates. And that's really the best of all worlds. I will talk about it on a future show, but a lot of people believe that your body has to become more fat adapted. No, you don't get to choose. You don't get to shift. Your body should always be burning body fat when it's in more of an aerobic based state, walking, sitting, sleeping. You're great. The greatest potential for body fat is actually then. Those sprints that we talk about, those hard resistance workouts, you're actually, believe it or not, burning more sugar. You can't force your body to tap into more body fat that way. The majority of the time, we want to be in a fat burning zone. I'll talk about that more in the future, but certainly depriving, depleting yourself for months and months and years and years is not going to do it. Use this structure. It's actually sharing with you exactly how to keep the weight off, why you start to regain the weight if you'd stay away too far from what was working for you. So continue doing what was working for you, but begin to add more of the calories back in, typically more of the carbohydrates back in. Slowly do that, and you'll find out what works for your body. Much more to go on this topic on how to re- how not to retox after a detox. I talk about the rotation diet, how one food could be causing you to gain two to three pounds in just one day, even a healthy food. Uh, so I will link those up for you here today. Hopefully this was helpful. Again, uh, feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. And that's at stephencabral.com forward slash 1867. Take care, everyone.